Hello everybody, once again I invite you to join me in our daily simple truths for daily living. And I'm happy to bring simple thoughts, simple truths from the extraordinary supernatural book which is the Bible, the Holy Scripture. And uh, you know, I've been studying and when it comes to New Testament, I've been reading very often and reading a lot. but. But during my devotional, I'm reading slowly, chapter by chapter. So yesterday I finished the second Chronicles. This morning I had my time alone with God and studying the book of Ezra. And, um, and my third son, his name is Ezra. So this book is an exciting book and I'll be studying more deeply um, and see what the Lord has in store for each one of us and my desire is to encourage you in your walk with God and my prayer is that your faith will be increased and your passion for the Lord will be fanned and uh, that's my desire to help you those who are watching and following me through YouTube uh, or to other media and I'm thankful that I can be a little help in your walk with the Lord. And so, my dear friends, if you have not subscribed, or if this, this, if this is the first time that you have found my video, I would encourage you to just subscribe, click the subscribe button, and leave a comment. So I will be encouraged to do more of such videos to encourage you in your walk with the Lord. Today, I want to talk about... Um, from the book of Ezra chapter 1, how should Christian um, serve the Lord in the temple? Or how should Christians come together in building the work of God? When you read chapter 1 of Ezra, Cyrus the king has been appointed, ordained, used by God uh, to build the temple in Jerusalem. Remember in la the last chapter of Second Chronicles, chapter 36, the temple is destroyed by the king of Chaldees, and Nebuchadnezzar takes all the gold and silver and all the uh, precious things from the temple to Babylon, and the king of Chaldees has no compassion. He destroys the temple, burns the temple with fire and palaces with fire, kills all the young people uh, of God uh, because they've been rebellious and God allowed the enemies to teach a lesson to the rebellious people of Israel and Judah. So now God uses Cyrus and puts in his heart to build the temple. Now when God does this, Cyrus recognizes the God of the Bible is the true living God. He, he, Cyrus says, you know, the God of the Bible has given me the whole world. The whole world is under my uh, care or, or under my rule. And the God of the Bible wants me to build the temple. And so he calls the people. Verse number two of chapter one says, Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. And he has charged me to build him and house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. So there is a leader. Okay, I want, I'll bring you to the New Testament. But here is a leader that God chooses. Here is a king that God is choosing uh, and asking him to build the temple in Jerusalem. The second thing is, you look at verse number three. Who is there among you of all his people? Is God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God which is in Jerusalem. So the leader here, the king, here Cyrus the king, is been given the responsibility of building the temple. The second thing is he is inviting the people to come and help in building the temple along with him. A good leader will always take the people along with him to do the work of God and it is never a one man work or one man show. He'll build the people. You and I, as, as a leader, we are not supposed to use the people to build our lives, but we need to use our life to build the people. We need to use the church. Uh, uh, we need to use our talents to build the church, to help the church 
we should never use it for our growth or whatsoever and cyrus teaches this lesson and he invites the people to come together with him and to help in building the temple in verse number four and whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth let the man of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts beside the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Here is the leader. You know, many a times we feel so scared or, or uncomfortable to talk about giving and uncomfortable in talk about offering. As a pastor, I've always felt that. I always felt like, what will people think if I preach about giving, if I preach about contributing? What will people think? And then a very uh, a great man of God, a friend of mine, uh, in, you know, outside India, one day he was with me and we were talking and he spoke to me and he said, Brother Lodson, because we were talking about and I said how uncomfortable I feel sometimes when I talk about giving and uh, offering and contributing. And he said, if you don't teach the people, you are actually crippling them spiritually. You are, you are taking away God's blessings from their life. Uh, and and you need to teach and if you teach they will learn and they will obey and I began to teach to my church and I tell you that advice uh, was a very good advice given to me he's a pastor uh, of the Faith Baptist Church in Sydney uh, and that pastor taught me this Pastor Mansour he, I don't know if he would remember but it helped me that that's stuck in my mind and and now I teach people uh, without feeling embarrassed, but I don't go overboard. I go, I don't go too much, but when necessary, I teach. And I've seen people obeying the word of God and God and, and people in our church, um, you know, getting together and, and contributing. And, and they have found, they have seen and ex uh, are experiencing how God is blessing their bonds and, and their cup overflowing and my dear friends that is how we need to be as christians and cyrus is inviting people he's saying come on and let's build together secondly hey those who can give bring your gold and silver your beast and your free will offering we all we need all these things to build the temple and so they are coming together contributing um, verse number six is and all they that were about them strengthened their hands with vessels of silver, with gold, with goods, and with beasts, and with all, and with precious things beside all that was willingly offered. So the people gave willingly. They gave precious thing. Uh, they they strengthened their hand with their giving. What a blessing it is! This is how God's people should be building God's temple. Verse number 11, and all the vessels of gold and of silver were 5,400, and all these did uh, Shez Bazar bring up with them of captivity that were brought up from Babylon unto Jerusalem. And, uh, you know, that was belonging to God's temple, and the enemy had taken it. Now it's brought back. And when we obey God, when we do God's work God's way, what we lost, God will bring it back to us much more than what we lost. It's like a seed, what you sow, you shall reap. You will reap the same, you will reap much more and you will reap surely. And so my dear friend, again, we are all supposed to be building the temple of God. And by the way, as a Christian, your body is the temple of the living God. As a Christian, we are the temple of the living God. We all have to get, get together, encourage one another, build one another. We need to build one another with encouragement, with fellowship, uh, with being obedient to God's word. We need to build one another by f uh, encouraging one another and, and fellowshipping and, and being consistent in our attendance to the house of God, to the word of God. We should not be staying at home. Uh, we need to understand we are living stones that builds the temple of God. And uh, that's Jesus said, I will build my church. And if you believe that you are saved, then you need to understand you are the living stone. And you don't want to be put away when the work, when the work of God is being built. So we all need to build one another with our words, with our 
uh, fellowship with our time. It's like time, talent, treasure, and testimony. We all need to build one another. So, dear friends, come together. Be faithful to God's word. Be faithful to God's house. That's your church. And be faithful to the word of God. Love your family. Love your church. Love God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your mind, and with all your soul. God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow.